catching lobsters and crabs at the moment, but normally we don't really do this at this time of year, like in the middle of February. But normally we're catching fish, but there isn't a lot, really a lot of fish left, so we're going to sort of concentrate on doing something else while, it, while we're fishing in pools again. Yeah. You can go to sea all week and do a full week's work and still end up earning nothing at the end of it. So that is, most of them, you know, they, they want a steady income, know what they're getting week in, week out, which you can't guarantee anything. At the moment, we have 250 crab pots, and at the height of the season, you know, during the summer, through to about end of September, we'll have up to about 500. Mm -hmm. Just measure him. See that one size, because it's touched. As long as he's within that measure, he's all right. We get a, a bit of fish in the pots as well. That's a cod, is that? We land our crabs and lobsters to the, to the merchants, and then they sell them on from there. We're getting 650 a pound for them. Crabs, they, they remain pretty constant, five pound to six pound. Only thing is, we're getting that 10 years ago. Yeah, there's a long way on the stairs, is that one. Hopefully the, the lawless will be a future in it, where, whether it, it, where it'd be a very good one, I don't know. I often wish I'd done something else, but, you know. I have a young lad and I shouldn't be at all sorry if he didn't want to go to sea at all. We've been looking at the Vikings, haven't we? Yes. Can anybody tell me why the Vikings came? I think in years to come, probably when Richard and Mike retire, I think we could be the end of the line for North Landing itself. It could be a shame. Matthew's dad and Hannah's dad, they have cobbles, which are like Viking ships. Your dad doesn't have a mast and oars on his ship, doesn't he? The engine goes when he's out at sea. Right, he has oars just in case, but he uses his engine, doesn't he? Yeah, and does your dad have an engine? I think he'd be very fit if he had to row, wouldn't he? <laughs> they go to sea and they turn their engine on and they get there very quickly. Well, I'll tell you something. You can get a crab from anywhere you like and you won't get the taste you get from flambered crabs because it's the feed that they live on that makes them what they are. Just see if there's any eggs in this. Look, these are eggs, very, very rich, out of the female crab. You can eat them, you know. They're good to eat. It, it, you could call this crab caviar. <coughs> the brother and I, we used to have to make a crab pot every day. We used to have to do it before we went to school in the morning. We only lived across the green. And the mother never let us out of the house while the bell went. And then at dinner time, she would be stood in the doorway and we should be walking across the green back again home for dinner. And she would be bellering out of the front door, very upright. And we were into the house and knitting again, same tea time. We're a bit peculiar here, you know, the Flamborians. They don't like to see change, and people know this. And this is why I don't really get on with everybody as I should, because uh, I don't talk their language. See, you get, you get people coming into Flamborough for West Riding and all over. And we've seen them all our lives. They're going to do all sorts, you know. But we like to leave everything as it is, and it has been for 100 years. And I don't like to see change. There's quite a lot of West Yorkshire people come. And they come for a weekend and once they've been here they want to come permanently it's got a, a terrific attraction and a, i can't put my finger on it Finders. 
butchers, there's bread shops, there's everything you want within a, a mile from here. Uh, the call us Wezzies, the uh, Flamborian of the call us Wezzies. We didn't know what that meant. That's we come from the West Riding. <laughs> there, there's not a lot to buy in there. officer of Flamborough Coast Guard. You don't know what's going to happen from one day to the next. Um, it's just one of those jobs that you've paid your goals, you don't know what you're going to. And at the end of the day, if you can save a life or help somebody, then yeah, there's a lot of satisfaction in it. People get too close to the edge. Um, very often the cliffs are actually overshot at the top where the chalk's gone from underneath. They don't realise how far overlapping the actual top of the grass is um, and it collapses underfoot. Um, you've also got cliff falls where people are walking underneath. Um, you've got chalk falling all the time. It's just eroding most of the time, especially through winter. But, uh, height of summer, it does get quite busy. Um, and then you've got a different sort of casualty through winter with fishing vessels, etc. Uh, as opposed to people getting stuck, cut off by the tide, falling over the cliffs through the summer. Chalk cliffs are quite crumbly. Uh, that's the problem with kids climbing them and such like. As you climb up, it gets crumblier. As you get further up, they tend to find themselves stuck. Uh, they can neither go up or down. And it's a case of putting somebody down to do the recovery. I used to go down to see bird eggs and sell them. Um, it was a tradition quite a lot of years ago. It was very primitive climbing gear compared to what we use now, although we use the same techniques. They used to keep the chalk cliffs quite clean because they climb them quite often, uh, whereas that doesn't happen now. They're not climbed enough to actually keep, you know, keep clean bits of cliff. I just have to speak. Silence, mate. See the lighthouse in there, and I uh, just, uh, just all in these pots here, and I just gonna uh, see what there is out of them. Whether we leave them here or just move them a, a little bit. There's a lot of tide runs here. You can get some very bad weather, just particularly off, off the head end. It, it's just the tides that just makes it a very bad part of the coast, you know. Well, you've got to, you know, if it comes, you've got to watch if it comes bad weather, wind comes, you know, get a sea wind. You've got to lift your pots off into deeper water so you don't get your pots scrubbed. And, you know, also if it's bad weather, you don't want to be sea anyway. They're very seaworthy of these cobbles. They can, you know, they can take a, lo a lot of weather. From, they'll take more weather than we will. <laughs> Not very often you get it flat cow. Severe gale force 9, now increased storm force 10. Local area patrol over. Seen the cobble, obviously rough weather. If it has engine trouble or anything like that, straight into the cliff. See if we can get a radio response from him for a start. Barnished hole, white wheelhouse. Uh, I'm just going to change location, we'll just get a, try and get a bit nearer for you. 
uh, from the mobile Humber Roger. I'll try and contact him. Uh, we have got uh, Bridlington and Lyport on exercise in the bay at the moment. We can send him if need be. Uh, it's a case of if they're working close in shore, you do get an awful swell underneath these uh, cliffs and such like. So it's a case of, yeah, the lifeboat is, you know, always handy to have. Good lifeboat on the Coast Guard. Uh, yeah, we've got a report of a small cobble possibly in difficulties just north of Clumber Head. He's quite close into the surf line. If you could proceed and investigate, over. On the Coast Guard, British lifeboat, Roger, proceeding. It's a bad day today. Uh, the wind, it's been northwesterly. But now it's gone due north. Well, this side is terrible of the head. There's a cobble out there and he's in trouble. And uh, the lifeboat's escorting him around. And the last I heard, he was into safe water. So there's no problem with him. But I went to sea with my father from, you know, when I was 10 years old and that way. And then I started helping the lifeboat when I was about 11 and I've been connected with the lifeboat ever since I was in the lifeboat launching party there was a lot of good feeling in the lifeboat and uh, when it went it was it was shocking it was well it was just as though I'd have been a death Cold this morning. It is cold. Well, fire's all right. Aye. Oh, you can't make it. Right. I met him when we first came here, and and we got on well. I think he spends more time in my house than he does in his own. The lifeboat in the olden days was, well, it, it was a it was a world apart. The lifeboat was everything, and. To be in the lifeboat was something that you lived for. You lived to go in the lifeboat. And it was a sailing lifeboat in those days. When that lifeboat went, you know, that really hit me. And I never got over it. And I never shall get over it. Because I see all the men like Dick Colin and all these chaps, Stevenson's and all them, to me, they're still down there. There's a, a, a good 40 wrecks round Flamborough, which is accessible, but most of them are well broken up because knowing the, the seas, what they get round here, uh, they get well broken. The closest one to North Landing is the Rosa, and uh, there's not a great deal left of her, but it, even at low tide, you can see the, uh, there's some steel plates. John Thompson, fisherman, drowned January the 10th, 1814, aged 28. From home he went with a mind most free, his livelihood to gain at sea. He ne'er returned, a furious wave cast him into a watery grave. A grave in motion turned the deep, left child and widow for to weep. In the life of sailor, cling to self no more, leave that poor old stranded wreck and pull for the shore. Help ourselves. We're not not looking for outside help, and uh, I think that that's very evident in, in what's happening in the village. A lot of the fishermen are still in Flamborough, but they've gone to Bridlington, they've gone into the larger vessels, the trawlers. There haven't been that many boats here for a lot of years, quite a few years now. But in the past, there was a lot of boats worked out of here. 
In my granddad's time, there was 80 to 100 cobbles working out with North London. When you listen to your grandparents talk how it used to be, there is a bit of nostalgia there to be able to go back to what it was like. It's possibly the end of an era, the end of a tradition. Or have the oh, there'll be crabbing. Will there? No, there's I think they're all in now, anyhow. They're in the fishy catch at the moment. But it'll come, you know. Uh, I like visitors, they'll come at town of year. Look at your old cobble down there. Aye. The road. She looks as good as ever. Yes. It's a very, very bad town, is this. But it'll come again, and the fishermen are still. You know, he has to believe in the future. There's nothing better than going up there, I think, on a bad day and walking on the cliff top and you're getting spray coming on the top of the cliffs. I mean, that, that is stunning. I wouldn't want to be anywhere else. No, this is home. <laughs>